Hello all. In today's session of parallel programming, we'll be moving on to the various memories that are available in CUDA. We have already covered some of the memories in the previous class. In today's session, we'll be moving on to the next type of memories. Having seen shared memory registers and the local memory, global memory. In today's session, we'll concentrate on the constant memory and the texture memory. Now, when we go for a constant memory and texture memory, these two come under the category of a read-only memory. Now, in the previous session, we have seen about a shared memory. So, when we go for a shared memory, two or more threads or the total block, when I say a block, it is collection of threads, will be using the same memory. But you have a problem of conflicts. We have seen a conflict problem where one of them can be a read operation, the other can be, be a write operation. So to avoid this particular synchronization or the conflicts here, what we do is we go for maintaining a separate memory, which we call it as a constant memory. And this constant memory is on a read only memory where the data where you have some data stored, which will not be changed in due course. So if you two or more threads, if they want to just read the data for some calculations, they can get the data out of this constant memory. Uh, for example, I'll just give you a simple example where if I want to calculate the area of the circle, it is pi r square. So pi value is some value. I mean, I'll just go for storing it as 3.14. So wherever in the computation I require this value, I'll just go to the constant memory and get this value. So you try to dump the memory where you are only using it for using the data for calculation purpose and you are not overwriting it that is the reason we call it as read only and uh, as you all know it is a catchy memory where it uh, the frequently accessed data will be stored and the amount of time it requires to take the data from shared memory will be less when you compare of storing the data in your catchy memory uh, this is all about your constant memory. Now moving on to the next one, which is nothing but your texture memory. And this texture memory is generally used for your image processing applications. Where in this example, I've just taken a scaling of an image. So when you just see this, the scaling factor as you are seeing, the scaling factor as you are increasing your scaling factor, the size of the image is being increased. So to perform this, a type of operations where you are working on a pixel. So internally your image is stored in the form of a pixel, right? So you want to perform the scaling factor on uh, simultaneous pixels. So more number of pixels simultaneously. So for that we go for texture memory. In order to actually use this texture memory, we have to declare the texture memory. So when you are declaring your texture memory, the, it takes three parameters. The first parameter is the type of your pixel values, whether you are storing an integer value, whether you are storing a float value. And the next one is CUDA texture type. And this CUDA texture type will tell you whether the value or the image values are stored in the form of one dimensional, two dimensional or three dimensional. When you go for just the grayscale operation, you can or perform your operations on 1D and 2D. When you want the color representation to also be done very precisely, we go for 3D. And you even have one more parameter which will specify you whether you are using it, the pixel values only for read mode element type. And instead of this CUDA read mode element type, we can even go for using a normalized mode method where in normalized mode method, you will just convert the float values given into your integer range. And if uh, the normalized value would be ranging from uh, 0 to 1 when you go for your positive values and minus 1 to 1 when I go for negative values. So these are your normalization values, range of your normalization values. Once you have declared this texture memory, the next step you could do is bind the texture memory to your texture. So texture memory to your texture is internally in your CPU, you will be allocating a memory. So here my memory in the CPU is your my, my array and this is my texture array which I am naming it as my texture. So I am establishing a link between the CPU memory and your texture memory. And once you are binding the reference, you can perform the operations on your texture memory. So the type of operations you can do it is your text to 2D. 
and whatever operations you want to perform since it is two dimensional i am specifying the name of my texture and uh, the parameters of your x and y values once your operation is done or you are able to read the data from your texture memory and perform the operations you go for unbinding the texture memory so kuda unbind texture and the name of your texture memory as i told this texture memory is basically used in your image processing applications the next memory will be dealing here is your pinned memory before seeing what is a pinned memory we have already seen that pinned memory is a non pageable memory we can even call a pinned memory as a non pageable memory or we can even call it as a logged memory where you will not be able to move this memory back into your secondary memory so this will be uh, present on your physical memory where you cannot move this particular part of your memory into your secondary memory when i use a virtual memory concept so movement from your primary memory and the secondary memory cannot be done why initially when they have gone for developing this gpus the procedure was you know the device is nothing but your gpu and your host is nothing but your cpu so whenever you want the data to be transferred from cpu to your gpu it is compulsory that the data is to be present in your pinned memory so though the host maintains the data in your pageable memory the data which is present in the pageable memory cannot be directly moved into your device so for that the cpu was creating a temporary buffer which is a pinned memory transferring the data from your pageable memory to your pinned memory and then from the pinned memory the transfer was taking place so whatever functions we are using cuda mem copy which will transfer the data from your cpu to your gpu will use the same procedure the data present in your pageable memory will be first stored in your pinned memory and from the pinned memory to your gpu so for every transfer it has to temporarily create a pinned memory right why because you are not going for transferring the data directly from your pageable memory to your ram so as the technology was evolving what they have done is instead of using your so this was basically used when i was using your cuda malloc function so cuda malloc will allocate the memory right so instead of using that uh, instead of creating a pageable memory directly i'll go for creating a pinned memory in the host itself so we call a function as cuda malloc host this will directly create a pinned memory and store the data of the cpu and from the cpu you can transfer the data to your gpu so pinned memory plays a very important role when i go for gpu and this is basically used when you want the large amount of data to be transferred from the cpu to your gpu and this pinned memory transfer is asynchronous in nature asynchronous in nature in the sense cpu and gpu can carry on with their work and in the background the transfer can take place so this is basically used when you want low latency basically used for your low latency applications where you want the response in uh, milliseconds or nanoseconds the next memory will be dealing in today's class is about your unified memory now as of now whatever the transfers we have seen we uh, have it in mind that cpu will have some memory and gpu internally will allocate its own memory and after you allocate the memory the data from the cpu is being transferred to your gpu so every time whenever you want you have to take care of this transfer of data from cpu to your gpu right so instead of that uh, they have gone for various releases of cuda so uh, from the release of cuda 6.0 they have gone for using unified memory where this memory whatever you are creating can be used both by your cpu and your gpu so initially they were using malloc function for allocating your cpu memory and they were using cuda malloc for allocating the memory on the gpu and uh, after that you were using cuda mem copy to transfer the data so these were the steps basically used to transfer the data from cpu to your gpu 
to overcome the, all these things we go for using a function known as CUDA malloc managed and you specify the address of the pointer and the number of bytes you want so the memory would be allocated and this part of the memory whatever you are allocating can be accessed both by your cpu and your gpu you need not go for using CUDA mem copy separately to transfer the data from your cpu to your gpu because this memory is accessible though it is advantageous when you practically implement it you have a problem in unified memory related to your page faults why do we actually get a page faults in your unified memories unified memory works on a property of first touch base so first touch base is nothing but you have your gpu you have your cpu right so pertaining to your cpu physical memory you have your cpu p page table and for cpu gpu physical memory you have your gpu page table so if particular part of the memory is first referenced by the cpu so that particular page would be present in your cpu page table so let me take an example and explain you in detail so here page one is the page which is first referenced by the gpu so it is present in your gpu memory Similarly, page 2 on the first touch basis was referred by the CPU. So, it is present in your physical memory of your CPU. Now, in due course of my programming execution, assume I want to access page 2. So, I want to use this page 2. When I want to use page 2, I'll just go to the GPU physical memory, but you are not able to find this page 2 in your GPU physical memory. So, it then generates a page fault. Why? Because page 2 is associated with your CPU. So, whenever you get a page fault, first step you have to do is you have to unmap this link of your page 2 with your physical memory. So, this is be remote. So, as you could see in this picture, there is no link established between your page and your physical memory of your CPU. The next step what, what uh, you will be doing is, in the next step what uh, in the next step, what you will be doing is once you go for a, 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 a releasing the link of your CPU, then the data from your CPU, CPU, whatever you have in the CPU memory will be copied onto your GPU memory. Now the data is present with your GPU. Once the data is present in your GPU, then you establish a link of this particular page to your page table of your GPU. In this way, we go for uh, overcoming the faults which are being present in your unified memory. Now, having seen unified memory, pinned memory, and uh, read only memory, where we have covered constant memory and uh, texture memory, we have different uh, GPU memory evaluations. As you could see, these are different types of memories. You have registers, level 1 cache, level 2 cache, you have your shared memory, and you have your global memory. Now, each of these registers so what is the size of your register for streaming multiprocessor so when you see these are your different configurations of your gpus that are available from different manufacturers so as you could see the size of the registers was same in all the configurations whereas when i go for level one cache so when you go for your level one cache there is a variation about the number of kilobytes of the data that the level one cache or the data cache was using it similarly there is a change in your shared memory capacity as you are moving from one technology to other technology. In other terms, I mean to say that as the evolution of your GPU memory is done, there are some new features that are being added, which are advantages when you go for parallel programming concept. So this is all about your CUDA memories, which we'll be using in our programming.